you are now within minutes of horror because apparently there is no escaping Earth. <laughs> now, before I begin this video, I do want to say this is not a video about what shape the Earth is. I do not know what shape the Earth is, nor do I care. Anytime that you talk about the science or mention any conspiracy theory, you are labeled a flat earther. I do want to also say that this video is going to be a little angrier than usual because DoorDash happened to drive right past my house. I did order Chipotle and I was craving Chipotle and I know I can get a refund, but that's not the point. You may hear some offensive language like darn and cheese and crackers. So if offensive language like that offends you, please do click off now. The term flat earther, like the term conspiracy theorist, was designed to give people labels if you question anything outside the main narrative. You can even believe the earth is a round sphere, but if you say, hey, why does a certain political candidate's emails back in 2016 keep mentioning pizza, cheese, and ice cream, you are a flat earther. Or if you happen to question what takes place inside a certain mysterious grove in California, you are a crazy flat earther. So that's all that is. Some top scientists and physicists even believe we're living in a giant hologram. They don't even believe the universe and the earth are real. They even have a name for this theory called holographic principle. And the thinking goes like this. Some distant two dimensional surface contains all the data needed to fully describe our world. And much like in a hologram, this data is projected to appear in three dimensions. So there are many scientists that do believe, like the characters on a TV screen, we live on a flat surface that happens to look like it has depth. So basically what scientists and physicists are telling us is that 3D is not real, it's all a mirage. It's the 2D that's projecting the 3D that is real. They even go as far to say that black holes, gravity, and quantum mechanics become much more simpler to solve and make much more sense when written in 2D than in three dimensions. I read though, um, mm -hmm. this holographic universe. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Did you, have you? I, no, I, 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 I saw it and I, have, I haven't read it's it. very thought-provoking. Yes, yes but a guy from up at MIT, I think, wrote that. Was there, was there another author? Do you remember the author of this one? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, yeah, so Holographic Universe, that's very freaky. It's freaky stuff it that we might just be a two-dimensional hologram of some think? other reality. What do you think of that? What I think, think the, probability the universe has told us that anything that is possible may just be likely. Hmm. And yeah, we could just be information contained in a membrane surrounding some other volume. And we, it's the illusion of a reality, but in fact, we're just this holographic projection of information. Yeah, it's deep. Now, if you go up to one of these scientists that believe this theory and say to them, does that mean our universe and our reality happens to be flat? It just appears 3D. They will say, well, that's the assumption that we're coming up with. But then if you ask them, does that mean the earth is flat too? They will say, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't like that talk around these parts. Now get you Diet Coke with a hint of pineapple with a splash of cherries and cream bleach drinking flat earther. So at the end of the day, I don't get into the debate whether the earth is round or flat. I really don't. I don't get into labels. They say to us, well, the moon landing is proof that we have left the earth's atmosphere. And then they say to us, well, bring it back a little bit because it looks like the moon is still within the earth's atmosphere. So there is a lot of back and forth as to what the supposed facts are, but I can only go off based on what happened in the past and what's going on today. Now, I'm being told to trust the science, to believe the science, and if the scientists are saying that the universe may be a hologram, that to me means that it's not real. Holograms, of course, are not real. There are scientists that even say that it's possible we could even be a simulated reality, that our reality, the universe, everything we see is not real, that we are just code, we are just a program. That thought is taken very seriously. <laughs> so Jim, I just remember you started all this a few years ago, in my mind at least, just uh, triggering the idea that uh, in your research you found things that forced you to consider the likelihood that, that 
uh, somebody programmed us. Could you? And, and, well, first of all, uh, I would disagree with you. I'm not sure that somebody programmed us, but uh, that's what you and I had a conversation where I pointed out that in my research I had found this very strange thing. Physicists, I like to say we're, we all belong to a company called Equations R Us. <laughs> because that's how we make our living is by solving equations. And so I was just going through solving equations and I was then driven to things that Max knows about, these things called error correcting codes. Error correcting codes are what make browsers work. So why were they in the equations that I was studying about quarks and leptons and supersymmetry? And that's what brought me to this very stark realization that I could no longer say that people like Max were crazy. And try to see what comes out uh, in a physical system. And um, that's actually relevant to why I got interested in a simulation idea. And in fact, um, by just watching the, the progress uh, that um, researchers in this field of simulating a strong interactions have made in the several uh, past few years, um, we started to wonder um, how could we not think about the universe itself based on this, uh, the laws that we've discovered um, not simulate it. So that the way that we actually simulate the universe, it might actually give us hints that the universe itself could be um, a numerical simulation. And then you would start thinking, well, let's make assumption that if that uh, scenario is the case, and if that simulation is actually has similarities with what we do in our research and just drawing parallels between our algorithms and uh, techniques that we use to simulate laws of nature um, and making assumption that they are similar, then what can we actually conclude about uh, the universe as a simulation? Can we actually make um, predictions for the signatures that we should go after and test? So I'm not considered a crazy flat earther. I can just go ahead and trust the science. I can listen to what the science is telling me. I can follow one of these theories where it's telling me that space is not real. It's just a hologram projected from a 2D plane. Maybe, just maybe, there is this dome that encompasses the Earth that is surrounded by water that protects us from this hologram, that separates us from nothingness. I mean, I'm not getting this information from some crackpot conspiracy theory website. I'm getting it from the people they said we should be listening to, the scientists, the science. They're saying to us that, yes, there is a theory, it is plausible, there might not be nothing up there at all. That it could just be one big video game. Our reality is just one big simulation. Or what we're seeing in the universe could just be a projection of reflection from another reality. So then if that's the case, what's the big deal about saying that you can't leave? Where are you going to go? What are you going to explore? Nothing? A hologram? So these people will say, well, these scientists are wrong. Because these same scientists told us that we went to Mars. We put a rover on Mars. So if the universe is a hologram, if the universe is fake, then how did we put a rover on Mars? And I have to ask, well, did we? And I can ask that, right? I'm not saying that I don't believe we put a rover on Mars. I'm just asking, did we? Because if scientists can ask the question if we're just a video game, then I can ask the simple question if we really did put a rover on Mars. Because there happens to be a place in Canada called Devon Island, which is so similar to Mars, even in the appearance of the rocky planet, that we actually placed a rover on Devon Island. Really, just turn the contrast up just a little bit on the image, and can you really tell the difference between Devon Island and the planet Mars? There was even that time that the Perseverance rover that's on Mars happened to capture us a very nice photo of a rainbow on Mars. Now, even this fact-checking website, Newsweek.com, stated that, yes, it does indeed look like a rainbow on Mars, but it is absolutely false. This is not a rainbow. Why? Because NASA actually happens to have a very logical explanation behind this rainbow captured on Mars. NASA has stated that this rainbow, oops, I mean this multicolored arc, was not a rainbow, but rather a lens flare, which is caused by light hitting the camera lens at a certain angle. Well, that clears that up. Thank you, NASA. I am glad we can always trust you. By the way, how did that meeting go with Tiffany G? 
But anyway, this video is not about Tiffany G. Um, what were we talking about again? Oh, right. Uh, the planets, the universe, and the scientific theory that none of it is real. Now, I don't care if we went to the moon or not. I really don't. I know some people are going to say to me, well, do you believe we went to the moon? Are you saying we did not go to the moon? And that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I don't care because at the end of the day, whether we went to the moon or not, that's not going to pay my taxes. That's not going to stop me from going to the big boy slammer if I don't pay my taxes, right? Because let's be honest, if I do go to the big boy slammer, I'm going to be the one to have to clean up somebody else's cell. I'm going to have to make their warm cooked meals. So to stop me from playing that role, I have to pay my taxes. I don't want to be the missus in somebody's prison. But when it comes to the moon, I can ask a question about the moon. Can I not? In the 1960s, we sent people to space. We sent people to the moon. They got out of a space shuttle. They went onto the moon. They made their footprint on the moon, which you can, they said you can still see. And we planted a flag on the moon. And we said, this is one small step for man, but one huge leap for mankind or something like that. This huge leap, we have not been able to do again. We successfully went to the moon and we successfully came back. And yet, we have not successfully returned. Because why? Because for some reason, 60 years ago, we happened to destroy the only technology that allows us to go to the moon. 60 years later, we have yet to be able to replicate that technology. Because why? It's just not important to us. We have plans to go to Mars. We have plans to put people on Mars, build settlements on Mars. But we can't put people on the moon. Make that make sense. You would think they would try to build this technology again and put people on the moon to test out that type of technology on something that's a lot closer to us. But no, they want to shoot completely past the moon and go right to Mars. My Mars theory is that they're telling these people, hey, come to Mars. You can be the first people on Mars and build a settlement on Mars. And all they're doing is taking them to Devon Island. And ultimately, they are going to be trapped somewhere like Uncle Jeffrey's Island. I mean, scientists can have all these different theories about the universe and how the universe works, but I can't have one theory of my own. That's not fair. This man, Elon Musk, is opening people's skulls and placing inside their brains Neuralink, an AI program designed to make humans better, make them superhumans, to fight off rogue AIs that he himself is creating. So you mean to tell me this man that has the technology to evolve humans does not have the technology, cannot replicate the technology all the way back in the 1960s to go into space, to go to the moon, or even perhaps past the moon. No, success to him and his company is that this rocket goes a little bit in the Earth's atmosphere and it explodes and they cheer and they have a good time. But eh, that's not my concern. My concern is paying my taxes and also to wonder where the real Tiffany G is. I mean, really, where is she? So that should make people concerned about Neuralink. Because if success to Elon Musk is a rocket not making it to its destination exploding in the Earth's atmosphere, if that's a success to him, then what's a success to Neuralink? Could it be a person's brain exploding about an hour into Neuralink and that to him is a success? So it looks like we're at a point, we're at a crossroads where science and religion go hand in hand. The Bible tells us we can't leave this earth and science tells us we can't leave this earth. So you can shoot those rockets all up into space all you like. You can bust it wide open in space. But at the end of the day, you cannot leave. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you want to see more, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please like as any engagement does help the channel grow. Once again, thank you so much for your support.